these are the first two solar roasters that we made. This was the very first one. So about four years ago, we started this. My brother, he's a coffee roaster by trade. I'd done a little bit of engineering, and then I got really interested in solar power. So you can see it actually looks kind of like a satellite dish because it's made out of an old satellite dish. This ended up being the thing that combined our talents, building a big solar concentrator to provide the heat for a coffee roaster. The framework is basically the ribs of an old satellite dish. Instead of just covering the dish with a mirror or something shiny, we use a number of separate little mirrors that we could align individually. So they're actually little eight by eight inch plastic mirrors all lined up. You could basically focus the sunlight to a target right here and the target was our coffee roaster. This was the very first coffee roaster that we made. It's kind of like a big aluminum marshmallow at this point. It has all the parts that a coffee roaster needs. It's just kind of low tech compared to a newer one. Basically, we would pour the coffee in through this hole there are a series of motors that would turn the drum over and over, kind of like a clothes dryer. The electricity was coming from a photovoltaic panel and all of the heat was coming from just light being concentrated in from this uh, mirror array. You can see the light would actually come right in through this window on the front and it's like a greenhouse, but the temperatures would be several hundred degrees. All of the light from all of these mirrors is focused through this one single window and the temperature can go up to seven or 800 degrees. At that temperature, it just vaporizes the coffee. Yeah, first roast of the day. The idea was that we needed some kind of coffee roaster and we couldn't afford to buy one at that point in time. We had to improvise, so we came up with the idea that we would use solar energy to provide the heat for coffee roasting. So this whole system is made so it can pivot around you just aim it at the sun and every five minutes or so we would move it slightly to follow the sun throughout the course of the day. You always have to be careful to make sure these are facing north when you store them because the sun will come up in the morning and the light will reflect off of them and it will put a really hot spot somewhere. I almost burnt down our garage with one of these. I had it sitting in front. The morning light caught it. I came outside and it was just starting to burn the paint off the garage so you have to be very careful. You can see this design is a little bit cleaner than the other design. This one is just simple rows of mirrors. You can still focus the light just as effectively. Um, we used glass mirrors on this one because they stay reflective for a lot longer. Plastic gets scratched and it ends up just becoming less and less reflective. These, they stay as, as bright as when you first got them. This was an experiment that I was working on. One possible architecture would be to use a trough type design instead of a big dish. It's just like a parabola or a cross section through a satellite dish, but it's very long. So the focus is actually right here. If you put a black pipe right through the focus, you can boil water with this. It takes about two or three minutes to get up to boiling temperature. The mirrors I bought as one foot square mirror tiles. And it took about three or four hours to just make all these little strips. The rest is it's just lumber. I'd say the total cost for this was about $350. It took a good week to put together. Concentrators, there are systems that are similar that are being used to make electricity. It could also be used for cooking or maybe even manufacture in some way. Some actual industry that isn't just about making electricity, but is about generating products or about replacing heat source with solar energy. You can roll it. So it has a range of motion big enough to get the sun through most of the day. This trough is a one quarter scale system just to experiment and see if it would work. The result is it doesn't get hot enough. So the experiment showed me that it was not the right thing to go with, but uh, We've got a giant solar barbecue now. This is actually a tower that sits in the very middle of our new coffee roaster. There's a giant solar tower. All of these actually bolt together to make uh, a really big version of that white reflector you see there. This is the system that we're building down in the front yard. This is going to be the concentrator system. All of these mirrors concentrate the sunlight onto this target and there will be a pipe that runs down and across into the roasting system. Throughout the course of the day, this whole system will basically track the sun. And it's just a giant easel for holding mirrors. When the solar day is over, it's stored and we have covers that will cover the entire system. We need to have protection from hail and high winds and just rain. So basically a giant system of mirrors will be out here on a turntable out front. The sun will be collected by a concentrator here and we'll be using the heat 
right next door in this little system. Instead of the coffee roaster being out on the end of an arm, we're actually focusing all of the light onto a receiver and we'll just be bringing superheated air down and into the coffee roaster. And this is the new coffee roaster. So compared to the little aluminum foil marshmallow, it's a, it's a bit of a different story. All of the electricity for the process is being generated on site with solar panels. We have a one kilowatt array. Then all of the heat for the process is coming from the concentrator outside. I think the coffee is better. Some of it is the fact that we're not using any kind of combustive materials to do the heating. We're just putting heat in. And some of it, again, is the preferences and knack of the coffee roaster, my brother. Whatever the combination, it seems to be a good one. It seems to work for us.